I had difficulty making just the most ordinary decision. If trying to clean the dishes, I, I really couldn't even decide whether I should pick up the glass or the plate first. And you're just empty and cold, and there's a terrible weight on your shoulders, and you, you just want to die. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? I... I've forgotten now. I think today is my last day. The way I feel. You're afraid you're going to die? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. You're not afraid? No. You, you would welcome death? Yeah, huh? I would. Have you been giving it thought? Yes, you have. For a long time. For a long time. <laughs> Depression is one of the most common psychiatric disorders. It is a frustrating and disabling illness. Yet treatment for depression has dramatically improved over the last 20 years. And some of the greatest improvements have come about through the use of electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Many people have heard that ECT is dangerous and painful, and they react with fear when ECT is suggested as a treatment. However, the way ECT is given has been greatly improved and refined over the past 10 to 15 years. ECT as it is performed today, is a safe and effective treatment for severe depression. But what is ECT? Why is it used? What is it like to have an ECT? What are the risks? We'll answer these and other questions by describing what ECT is, showing an actual ECT procedure, and asking people who have had it how it has affected them. You'll be better able to decide, based on knowledge and understanding, whether ECT is appropriate therapy for you. In ECT, small amounts of current are sent to the brain. The current causes brain activity discharges in the part of the brain that controls sleep, appetite, and mood. These discharges have the effect of reducing depression. ECT is most commonly used to treat severely depressed people. It can be helpful to patients who do not respond to antidepressant medication, are thinking seriously about suicide, have unclear or unrealistic thinking, or have very poor self-care. Before patients undergo ECT, they are carefully assessed, including a complete medical history, a physical examination, laboratory screening, an electrocardiogram, an x-ray of the spine, and consultations with a cardiologist and anesthesiologist. ECT is not usually done if a person has had a recent heart attack or if there's increased pressure within the head, such as might be caused by a brain tumor. Before the ECT treatment begins, a team made up of a psychiatrist, a primary nurse, and a psychiatric social worker talk with a patient and family to provide emotional support and information about ECT. They will also ask you to read and sign a consent form for the procedure. Because anesthesia is given for the procedure, the patient can have nothing to eat or drink after midnight of the day of the ECT. Several health professionals form the ECT staff, a psychiatrist, a resident doctor, an anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist, and a staff nurse. ECT is done in an intensive care unit or special ECT suite. Usually eight to ten treatments are given over a span of two to four weeks. Each ECT procedure lasts about 15 to 20 minutes. Once in the ECT suite, the nurse anesthetist begins an intravenous line. This will be the only time during the procedure that the patient feels any pain. The blood pressure and heart rate are monitored throughout the ECT. The psychiatrist uses an electroencephalogram, EEG machine, to monitor brain waves during the procedure. This helps the ECT staff measure the brain activity caused by the treatment. The nurse anesthetist gives a short-acting anesthetic through the IV. The patient will fall asleep in a few minutes. A muscle-relaxing medicine is then given to reduce muscle contractions and prevent injury. Before this is given, another blood pressure cuff is attached to one leg to prevent the medicine from affecting the muscles of one foot. By observing contractions in this foot, we will be able to monitor the brain activity during the ECT. 
The nurse anesthetist helps the patient breathe throughout the rest of the ECT. She also places a mouthpiece in the patient's mouth. This helps the patient breathe and protects the patient from muscles that contract during the passage of current. The psychiatrist places the ECT electrodes on the patient's head. In some ECT treatments, the electrodes may be placed on both sides of the head. This method is called bilateral ECT. It usually requires fewer treatments, but it may increase memory disturbances. Or, the electrodes may both be placed on the same side of the head. This method is called unilateral ECT. It may require two to four more ECT treatments, but memory disturbances may be fewer. While the treatment is applied, the psychiatrist monitors brain waves on the EEG monitor. He also monitors the contractions of the cuffed foot. This allows him to check the effectiveness of the treatment. The patient usually recovers consciousness within a few minutes. After recovering, the patient is taken back to their room. The nurses continue to monitor blood pressure, pulse, breathing, and level of alertness. There may be some slight discomfort immediately after each ECT. Here's how some patients felt afterwards. The only difficulty really was afterwards a headache and a little uh, dizziness and uh, sleepiness. Uh, I didn't feel good. It wasn't fun. <laughs> but I slept all day. I would come back and have my breakfast. It was always done in the morning. So I would come back, have my breakfast, uh, and go to bed and sleep. And I'll wake up and have my lunch, come back, go to bed and sleep. Uh, by the evening, I'd start to feel not quite so awful. Uh, I, truthfully, it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> uh, and by the next day, I, uh, almost all of the physical uh, problems were gone. The headache was gone and the dizziness and the nausea. And I could even feel a little better, even within one day. I, I would feel not quite so desperate and uh, just able to joke a little bit. The only problem I had was when you wake up, you have a terrible headache for about three to four hours, and then it goes away, and then you get up for the day and have your lunch and forget about it till the next time, and you don't... Uh, you don't know, you can't feel it when you have it because you're asleep and you don't feel the IV. That's just a tiny pinprick and uh, you don't know what's going on so there's no problem at all. Headaches and slight confusion are the two most frequent feelings after ECT. The nursing staff will provide care to minimize discomfort. But are the effects of ECT helpful enough to warrant any temporary discomfort? Dr. Leon Grunhaus director of the ECT program at the University of Michigan Medical Center, believes that for many severely depressed people, ECT may be very helpful. We know that ECT is an effective form of treatment for depression. 80 to 90 percent of depressed patients treated with ECT respond favorably. I have asked several depressed patients who were treated with ECT to describe what happened to their depression after being treated with ECT. What have you been doing during the day just to keep yourself busy? Oh, making coffee and stuff. You do reading. Any? I've been reading the paper, and that's something I ain't done for a long time. Well, I'm not right back to normal, but I'm going to get there. You have a ways to go, but <laughs> you have some hope now. I right? hope. And I could tell each time, I could tell improvement. And I wanted more. <laughs> Even though. Uh, uh, it made me feel pretty pretty bad for one day. I wanted more. Well, I've been over to I've been over to the gym a few times for slow aerobics and some exercise, and uh, <clears throat> they they have music over there some days, and I, uh, I'm working on a couple projects down to. <clears throat> OT. I'm, I'm able to decide what I'm going to wear just like that and put it on. Uh, it would take me oh so long before to decide what I was going to wear. And 
things that were decisions before are not even decisions. Getting out of bed. Um, I just, you know, I just do it. Mm -hmm. it's, we take that for granted, but you don't take it for granted when you're depressed. ECT improves many of the signs of depression. Shortly after the beginning of a course of ECT, we observe how sleep, appetite, and self-care patterns improve. Also, how motivation and optimism become more apparent in the patients. A striking finding is to observe how suicidal ideas start disappearing as the course of ECT progresses. However, as a medical surgical procedure, ECT may have side effects associated with it. Most of these side effects relate to the anesthesia procedure itself and concentrate in the areas of heart and lung function. But because the patients are asleep for only five or 10 minutes, these side effects tend to be minimal. The ECT staff is well trained in the treatment of these possible side effects if they occur. Other side effects more directly related to ECT are temporary confusion, headaches, and difficulty with the memory during the course of ECT. Difficulties with long-term memory is one of the greatest concerns patients who are considering ECT have. In reality, it is difficult to separate the effects of ECT from the effects of depression itself on memory because we know that patients who are depressed may also show difficulties with their memory. Nevertheless, for the period of the ECT course, patients may show unclear memories. My memory is a little scrambled in cer at certain periods. Uh, and some, there was a, for instance, there was a, a calendar in my room. Uh, and I'm not really sure where that calendar came from. It probably, I probably picked it up during, uh, during the ECT. Most things I can remember. But every now and then there'll be something that sort of surprises me. Oh, when did that happen? And it happened during that period. How about your memory? Has it had any impact on your memory, the ECT treatments? Oh, I don't know. My, my memory's quite good, I think. As we mentioned previously, any memory difficulties observed during a course of ECT may relate to the depression itself, the anesthesia procedure, and the actual ECT treatments. We know that 80 to 90% of the patients who received bilateral ECT will report that their memory has recovered within the three to six months after the treatments, while 10 to 20% of the patients may report a change in the quality of their memory. On the other hand, patients who received unilateral ECT report full recovery of the memory functions within three to six months after ECT. So, is ECT worth it? The best way to answer this question is to ask those who've had ECT to describe what it has meant to them. When you came in, you were pretty nervous, too. How has that been for you? Oh, well, I'm calm down. I don't shake. Are you back to normal in that way? No, I'm not right back to normal, but I'm going to get there. So they thought they would try ECT, and I was against it. At first, I was afraid of it because my father had had it 40 years ago, and it was very different than, than it is now. But I'm glad I had it because it brought me back to myself. Mm -hmm. To see myself healing, it, w it was like a time lapse. It happened so quickly. I could see myself healing. And the staff was, is supportive, and the, the patients, other patients are supportive. And uh, it was a good experience. And well, I'll say it again. If I, if I do feel myself slipping, I'd like to come in for a tune-up. <laughs> it worked. It really worked. ECT's effect on depression can be dramatic. But is it for you? If ECT is offered to use a treatment for depression, it is because your doctor thinks you will benefit from it. We hope you'll feel more comfortable making this choice 
now that you've seen the procedure and heard from people who have had ECT. Thank you.